Mm. Tell me, tell me some inspiration you use each day. What inspires you? Mm. You know, each day is different. <laughs> Hello, Anna, and welcome to Business Spotlight. Great to see you again. It's been a while, but I, as I mentioned, I see a lot of your social media and you're very active, which is fantastic. So I'd love to hear more about you and about your business, please. Hey, Milton. Thanks so much for having me. It has been a little while and uh, congratulations on your book. That's always great to get that information out there. So my name is Anna Oshrov. I am the CEO and founder of Flint, as well as Eventologist Training. Now, today I'm going to talk and focus a little bit more about Flint because that has been my baby for the last little while and we have taken some great pains to build a digital tech platform. Who would have thought? Anna went into a startup instead of small business and into digital technology. Let me tell you a little bit about Flint. Flint was developed to help our users get more customers for less at its basic level. Essentially, what I realized in my journey as a marketer, as a person who thrives on supporting my clients to be more visible so they can build their reputation and increase their revenue by really leveraging the opportunity for digital technology, what I realized is that there's some amazing platforms out there. However, most marketing technology gives us marketing or campaign tools that don't give us campaign strategy and what I mean by that is right now for you to be visible online right, for you to get your content out there your content on your socials on your emails across all different channels on social so Facebook LinkedIn Instagram wow. through email to get your beautiful images out there you need to cobble together a whole range of platforms right you need to use something to create your beautiful graphics. You need something to then write your content. You need somewhere to then schedule those graphics and that copy and those emails to get it out into the world. And what happens is for most small business owners, who 47% of whom are doing their own marketing, what happens is most simply just don't post. Yeah. So true, so true. So true. And so Flint was developed to take the guesswork out of it and put it all together. And so by le leveraging Flint, what you will literally get is a pre-created campaign, right? So imagine you've you've got this idea for a blog, right? You're like, you know what, I'm going to write a blog on a topic that's really dear to my heart. And you go into Flint and you go, cool, thank you, AI technology. I'm going to type in my blog idea. AI is going to take that and then write your blog for you. Then you click start campaign. And what that's going to do is take that information and instantly put it into an email, cut it up and create pictures for it, schedule it onto your Facebook, your LinkedIn and your Instagram with pre-created days and times, and then post it for you, track it and tell you what's your best performing content. Well, wow, fantastic. And what sort of cost involved with that, Anna? Well, it's a good question, Milton. We've uh, recently relaunched Flint with a free tool plus multiple price levels because okay. what we found was that whilst this sounds amazing, until somebody sees the full scope, like end-to-end -end rollout, people can't conceptually understand what Flint does. And so what we've now done is we've launched a free platform which enables people to be able to create their campaign. So from having the copy written to having that all cut up to creating it, all the images. And then what they can do is they can post to one channel, which means you can post to your personal LinkedIn. You can email up to 200 of your users, but the email comes from a Flint email address. And you can have one campaign running at a time. So our campaigns are usually based on a monthly cycle. So you can only have one campaign running at a time. So that's our free version. On oh, that's, our, that sounds incredibly generous for what you're offering. Yeah, wow. you're right, Milton, it is. And you know what, maybe uh, in 12 months' time, we'll realise, you know what, we're actually offering a lot. And whilst our users start to know and we get to be known in the marketplace, it's going to be much easier 
to get people out there. But you know what? At the end of the day, what matters to me is to support those that support others. Fantastic. Well done. So, Anna, what uh, geographic area do you cover? Uh, currently, Flint is available for all English-speaking countries. We are obviously focusing initially on, you know, Australia, but that doesn't mean that somebody who's not in Australia can't use it. In fact, we have had some people who are VAs who are working in the Philippines, are leveraging our technology for their clients right yeah. now. But we have decided to launch initially in English speaking countries, focusing on Australia and really leveraging my network of amazing small business owners who I've been working with for the last, you know, 10 or so years and building those relationships and really uh, supporting them and, you know, learning in the process. I don't know everything. I can only, you know, go, oh, this is an idea and I think this is going to be really helpful for people just like myself. Yep. And then I need feedback from people just like myself who can tell me, you know, this is working and this is not and can we add this? And so this is what we've been doing. We've been iterating yep. and really building up the platform in order to or flint with a double T in order to see how we can best service our ideal demographic. That sounds terrific. Well done. Congratulations. Now, how long have you been in the business, Hannah? So Flint, look, it was an idea before COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, during COVID, I just before COVID, actually, I had a business event venue. And the whole purpose of the venue really was called the Holistic Business Hub. And the idea was to really empower especially holistic health practitioners, those that support others, to be more visible. <laughs> so to leverage social email and events in order to be more visible. Now, the best way to promote your event is to promote your event. And that means, you know, do some great videos and then do a great blog about it and then put some social media content together. And what I used to do was give people a strategy. I'd be like, here, here is a checklist on exactly how you too can create and repurpose great content to have you visible. Like I'm visible. I follow this process and I still have time to run a business so I can teach you. <laughs> and people, you know, still put it in the too hard basket. And I thought, you know what? If I can teach you, then I can teach a robot to do the same thing. And so it took a while to find a team. And, um, you know, so the ideation started in 2019. Over 2020, we put together a bit of a team and started down this journey. 2021, we really uh, struggled to find developers. <laughs> the world went into a whirlwind. It was challenging to find team. We finally found team. And really in September last year, we launched our MVP started to get some great feedback and now we are obviously relaunching with our Flint version 1.0. So in this particular uh, business as such, we've sort of been functioning since 2021, uh, but as a, a, you know, a marketing specialist, I've been in the industry since 2006, a while. <laughs> and uh, who's your ideal client or customer? That's a good question, Milton. Initially, we developed Flint to really focus on supporting service-based small business owners, those that really need to build up their reputation online in order to be able to make sales because they sell high-ticket items and really need to have that um, customer engagement prior to conversion. So that's where we're starting. We're starting with the service-based businesses. However, the platform has been developed in order to be able to expand. So whilst we're going to start focusing on um, coaches, consultants, speakers, authors, holistic health practitioners, we can expand then to the retail and hospitality space and then really be able to grow from there and then add in product, so e-commerce style um, content but we are really starting out with those that really want to need to get that sort of longer form content out into the world to be able to build up that reputation. And Anna what's the biggest challenge you're facing in the business right now? Mm. Uh, our biggest challenge is well for, for me personally my biggest challenge is balancing what our users need and then balancing the 
possibility of providing that. Because we're a tech platform, we have to be able to iterate and build and code. So, you know, balancing the right amount of team, both the development side and also the customer support and customer service side uh, can be challenging whilst looking at how can we effectively sell and convert and still be able to support and iterate. That's probably been the biggest sort of balancing act right. that's been our challenge. What's your biggest learning you've had since being a business owner? Um, I'm sure there's many, but what, what really stands yeah. out? Yeah. What is my biggest learning as a business owner? I think my biggest learning has been understanding how to balance vision versus reality and Good. really um, learning to step into uh into what we've actually created you know I think that success can look very different like I know that when we had when I had the business event venue the holistic business hub uh you know my vision was to create a space where people could learn collaborate and grow and I did that we had a space where people could learn collaborate and grow but in the process that doesn't mean that I had a you know financially viable functioning model and so on the one hand, you're like, oh, I'm still, you know, I'm still learning how to build and sell and grow and I'm not making the money that I want to be making and yet I'm fulfilling on the vision. And so understanding what success looks like and not beating yourself up and being really um, fair in how you judge yourself, I think is very, very important. So what are some of the biggest issues you've had to overcome during your journey in this business? Mm -hmm. Apart from what you've just mentioned, of course, but... <laughs> Uh, I think as for many businesses, COVID was definitely a big, big challenge, especially when you're in the space of event space and workshops and um, in-person events and training people how to do that. So I guess a shift into COVID caused me to have to close my venue and learn how to take all of that training online, which in part was a bit of a blessing because what I really enjoyed was the teaching and training and the product development, et cetera, not so much venue um management and then coming back out you know i think we're currently in the transition phase you know we had we had all, all of that trauma and change and now we're back into the other transition phase and people aren't really sure what and how and where and so i think some of the biggest challenges have been to adapt and not and not lose sight of what it is that you are at the core now, what have you learned about yourself during your journey? Mm -hmm. um, mm. I've learned that I, I have a very strong need for validation from others. <laughs> and that validation from others is not ever going to be the best way to feel happy and confident in your growth. So learning how to understand that it's not really validation in others. It really needs to be validation in self. Uh, is probably one of my biggest lessons learnt. Fantastic. Hmm. Tell me, tell me some inspiration you use each day. What inspires you? Mm. You know, each day is different. <laughs> uh, yes. And that's something that I've really, really noticed. I'll tell you a story, actually. Yeah. The other day, I was walking along Flinders Lane and I was having a really bad day. Uh, you know, recently, in order to be able to support our development team, I've had to do a lot of different work so that we've got income coming in whilst we're growing and launching a tech business. And so I was doing some work, which I wasn't really happy about doing, and my day was going really terribly. And I'm walking up Flinders Street. And then all of a sudden, I do this. And I turn around, I look to my left, and I was nudged by a truck. Literally, a truck was pulling out from the side of the road. I was walking up this way and the truck nudged my shoulder. I've just got a bruise. I'm fine. Uh -huh. But for some reason, it was such a wake-up call for me because I was in such a bad mood at the time and everything. I was just thinking doom and gloom. And I don't know, maybe it's my natural positivity. But for some reason, that, I was like, I just got hit by a truck. And it shifted my perspective on being grateful more than anything else I was like I was having such a terrible day and then this thing nudged me and I thought you know what one that could have been way worse and two 
I should just be grateful. I should be grateful that I have the opportunity to go and do all the different work that I can go and do in order to achieve the things that I really want to achieve. And so I think gratitude is, plays a really big part in um, daily inspiration. Uh, the other thing that helps me, I'm very much an action-taking person. So when I start to feel like everything is kind of collapsing, I look at what are the immediate things that I've got control over and what are those actions that I can take in order to make me feel like I'm moving forward, you know, make you feel like you're achieving something. But also the flip side of that can be like doing too many things and too much shiny object syndrome. So finding that balance of like calming yourself and learning how to action plan and take the right logical steps at a time. Uh, well done. Do you have any favourite quotes or sayings that keep you focused during the day? Uh, yeah. One of my favourite uh personalities i guess or authors speakers writers is brene brown yeah, yeah we, all, we all love brene brown and i think one of the biggest lessons that i've learned through brene brown is choose discomfort over resentment and essentially what that means is learn how to have the uncomfortable conversation straight away rather than doing and saying yes and i'm a yes person and then feeling resentment because there's nothing worse than, you know, someone saying, hey, I've got this really great event. Would you like to help me with it? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to help you with it. And then like four or five weeks in, I'm like, wow, this thing that I'm helping on is now taking up all of my time. I've got no time to do all the things that I need to be doing for myself and for my business. And now I'm just doing it with resentment. So learn to choose discomfort over resentment and have you know, those conversations that need to be had in time. And the other thing that drives me, uh, I don't know if you've ever read a book called The Four Agreements. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So for those that haven't um, read it, I highly recommend reading it. And yeah. I'm going to try and remember the four of them. Yes. But one is never assume. One is be impeccable with your word, both for yourself and for others. Another one is always do your best. Remembering that your best is going to be different depending on where you are in that space and in that time. And the last one is, can you help me there, Milton? Can you oh, remember? No, the first two, I, I jumped at. Fourth you one. Take it with your word. Always do your best and cannot remember. That's just something you guys are going to have to Google. It's that yeah, open, right. loop. open loop for you. But the four agreements, a really, really great book. Yeah, fantastic. If you start your business again, what would you do differently? Oh, so much. <laughs> um, it's really interesting. Being in the space of startup is very, very different than being in a small business, and I just didn't really know this. So when we look at the startup space, there's a lot of opportunity for um, accelerator programs at ideation phase. You know, I spent two years just looking for partnership to build the platform because I knew I couldn't do it by myself. But I didn't realize that what I could have done is gone to, you know, an ideation level accelerator program and pitched my idea and found team and found others to jump on board and get the training that I needed at the time in order to accelerate growth at a rate that is much faster than where we would have, but well, than where I feel we are right now, because I just didn't know any better. You know, small business, you you build a product, you test your product, you try and get customers, and you really learn whether it's viable or not based on your income and cash flow. Startup business, you can start up, you can find others, you can get invested interest through financial support and really be able to leverage and grow and leverage your advisors and I think I would have been much I would have just gone down that path okay. um, but you know it is what it is uh, and what would you say to someone thinking of going into business do it no <laughs> good good many people say don't do it so that's good no, do it I, um I had a really great um learning and they said starting your own business is personal development with a paycheck <laughs> yep how true fantastic mm -hmm. 
Anna, what's the best advice you'd give to your 18-year-old self? Ah, oh, 18-year-old self. Best advice I'd give to my 18-year-old <laughs> self is stop caring what other people think so much. You know, I've had a really full life. I have travelled all over the world. I have, you know, snowboarded and done ski seasons and have had amazing, amazing experiences in my life, and I feel very lucky in that. But what I've learned as I've gotten older is that I spent so much time experiencing those things while not being present because all I cared about was, you know, do I look fat in my clothes and do these people like me and Am I going to be, you know, loved and accepted in this space? And all that's doing is taking you away from being present in the experience and thinking about all of that insignificant ego-driven stuff that, and then and feeling all sad about it. So that's what I would really love to impart on 18-year-old self. And you know, you're the third person this week to mention something like that, that to be present and to stop worrying about what people think. I know one of the best advice I was given is that what people think of me is none of my business. And I thought, <laughs> how good's that? <laughs> totally. But, but it wasn't until I'm in my mid-30s that I accept yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. It's such a, it's so sad, you know, you see the beautiful young people wandering around and mm. I teach at RMIT University um, part-time, like as a, a sessional teacher. I teach marketing, communications, and public relations. And so I work with, you know, that sort of younger demographic, that, you know, 19 to 25-year-olds. Yeah. And I actually find that they've got more self-acceptance than I feel I had when I was yeah. that age. You know, there's a lot more around learning to be present and learning to accept yourself and learning to accept others. And yet... There's so much more opportunity for bullying and yeah. very, it's a very interesting um, world that we live in, but I feel like there's less self-deprecation. And Anna, tell me about the, what's the future look like to you? you know, what are the main challenges moving forward in your industry? Ah, uh, The challenges, look, technology moves really quickly, so we never know what's going to come at us next. So that's always you know, at the forefront for me. I do believe that because we bring campaign automation or strategy automation, we actually can leverage the, you know, technology that comes through. But you never know. Uh, Chat GPT came in and, it, you know, my students the other day, I said to them, Google the question, and they went straight to Chat GPT to ask the question. You know, and that's a change that was like that. So yeah. I think those are some of the challenges in, in this space. And also, uh, the talent pool is shifting a lot at the moment. So, you know, a year ago, it was really challenging to find high quality development developers because a lot went into digital technology. You know, people went online to live. Uh, and now we're seeing, you know, a big redundancy in that space. So we just we just don't know. We don't know what the economy is going to be doing in the next few years. So I think those are all the um, areas that we need to focus on and just understand what's happening in the world in order to be able to protect um, our company. Definitely investment is very different. You know, what you'd expect from an investor even a year ago, uh, you know, it was higher money opportunities and higher valuations. Now our valuations are lower and, you know, the opportunity for investment and how much people will invest is lower. So those are some of the things we need to uh, be really aware of in order to succeed. Fantastic. Anna, thank you. And finally, are there any offers you'd like to include in the newsletter from your business to help promote you and also for the other readers? Uh, yeah, look, Flint, as I said, we are relaunching with a free model. So would love for you guys to jump on, go www.flint with a double T, F L I N T T com.au and just click on try try now or start now and jump on and have a go you know have a go at creating a campaign it's super easy um as soon as you sign up you get a free um course on how to write really good content to help you be able to do that through flint and not through flint so yeah and you know as much as possible try it out and give us feedback 
If there's something that's not working for you, don't just stop using it. You know, shoot me a line, find me on LinkedIn, find me on Facebook, drop me a line and say, hey, Anna, love this, but this is not quite right because we want to be able to build something that's going to make a difference in your lives. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it and can't wait to see the final version. Thanks so much, Milton. Lovely to catch up as always. Thank you so much. Have a lovely afternoon.